Uh, last week, uh, we dove into the WannaCry Wanna Cry. ransomware. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that was a big deal. Still is a big deal, but fortunately, we didn't really see another evolution of it over the weekend from what I've been told. I mean, we all know about WannaCry at this point. You've seen the episode, episode number 504. If you haven't yet, please check it out. We had some great industry leaders on the show to talk about uh, this threat and what it meant to, uh, to, you know, malware in general. Mm -hmm. Where is this thing going? What is happening with the evolution of malware on the internet? And it's a big deal Mm -hmm. because our antivirus doesn't stop it because it's not a virus per se. We're stepping Mm -hmm. into a whole new realm here. We've been seeing this evolution take place, but now we're at a point where it's wide scale, it's global, and we need to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. So how do we keep ourselves safe? First of all, what has happened since our interview last week with with our two guests? And we have seen uh, ESET release a tool that will tell you if your computer is susceptible to the eternal blue um, mm. NSA exploit. Awesome. So this is the thing in Microsoft Windows that is allowing WannaCry to mm-hmm. spread. The NSA uh, created the software to use to spy on individuals and it was released to the general public and so now hackers can use that code that was originally meant for the government to be able to monitor the goings on on your computer. Well, how do we know whether we're whether that's uh, an open backdoor on our computer now that it's an exploit that is being used in the wild? So, ESET has released that. Go to cat5.tv/ebcheck. You're going to be able to find out more information about that. Ebcheck stands for uh, Eternal Blue Check, of course. So uh, check that out. Download so, that if you're on Windows. But it does not tell you if you have. Just the <laughs> ransomware. Just <laughs> no, you're if you're susceptible. This, yeah. This is yeah. if you, okay. not even just want to cry. This is an exploit in Microsoft Windows that WannaCry is actively utilizing oh, in order okay. to spread itself. Right. That's why Windows XP is mm-hmm. done. Because, <laughs> it's been because, done for a while. Because people can't patch it. So, you know, they're not getting the regular updates and everything like you do on Windows 10. So if you have that problem, which you do, um, it is not going to get fixed automatically. So. Right you are susceptible, and that's why Windows XP hospitals and things like that are getting hit really, really hard. That's why Mm -hmm. uh, Russia is getting hit really, really hard, because there's a lot of XP still in operation. There's a lot of uh, pirated versions of Microsoft Windows, and so they are not getting those updates. Mm -hmm. So along that vein, we've got some great news from Microsoft, and this comes as a bit of a surprise. (laughs) Microsoft has, in fact, released the patches to the public for legacy operating systems. Wow. So if you're on Windows XP, if you have Mm -hmm. an XP system, if you've got uh, Windows Server 2003 or some other old operating system for Microsoft that is generally not receiving updates because it's end of life or beyond, Microsoft has realized, hey, this is a serious enough concern. We need to release these patches for free to the public. So you can head on over to (sighs) cat5.tv slash WC patch. And that, of course, is uh, that's incredible. Wanna cry patch? Good. If you want to think about it, you know where where I came up with the URL. So cat5.tv/wcpatch is for your legacy Microsoft Windows stuff. Keep in mind, uh, Linux systems are not susceptible to the Wanna Cry threat in and of itself. However, if you have a Linux server or Linux computers on your network, and you bring a Windows machine that is susceptible to mm-hmm. that threat into your network. Now it can get into that computer and it can propagate all your network shares. So it can can damage the files that are housed on a Linux server or Linux computer Mm -hmm. if you have Windows machines that are susceptible to this threat. Okay, so that's a very Mm -hmm. serious thing. We've got to keep that in mind. Uh, Can we look back at the episode where I made an analogy about Auto, automobiles and warranty. the warranty. Right. Yes. And C128D really called me on the fact that, mm-hmm. well, you didn't explain that very well. And right. you know, it, was, it was something as a live broadcast and certainly a live interview. We come up with things and we discuss things and we talk about things and we don't always think to stop, explain it in greater detail. Um, Sasha, could you read C128D's uh, message for us? And then I'm going to read my 
uh, my response to that as well, okay. just to clarify things for you. So here we go. The analogy of outdated operating systems to out-of-warranty automobiles is completely bogus. Out-of-warranty and out-of-support are two completely different scenarios. A 20-year-old Ford Taurus is out of warranty, but is fully supported and properly maintained, absolutely no risk to the driver. I worked in the auto industry for over 40 years, started when I was six. <laughs> wow, so, that's awesome. So I have a better idea about that than a lot of computer people. Um, Third-party vendors are still making parts for older vehicles. I've seen them for vehicles that were made nearly 100 years ago that meet or even exceed OEM specs. Haynes, Shelton, Motor, and others make complete repair manuals, some even containing full electrical schematics. And certified diagnostic programs and hardware are readily available for just about any vehicle you can imagine. That makes maintaining an old vehicle reliably and safely relatively easy and cost effective. The exact opposite is true with computer software especially and OS. It's extremely rare that a third party can even come up with a reliable and safe patch for an out of support OS. Okay. And Robbie. So I appreciate um, your feedback C128D and anyone else who had the thought. Um, and my comparison was not really meant for the cars, I was trying to give an example of Microsoft Windows and their approach, mm -hmm. Microsoft's approach to the deprecation of Windows XP. So if I may, I'm just going to read my response for those who uh, are thinking the same thing or want to know how I responded to that. I said, fair point, C128D, allow me to explain my intended meaning behind the analogy. My intent was to express that we perhaps should evaluate whether it is correct to put blame or even place expectations on Microsoft. To further your 20-year-old Ford Taurus point, what we're dealing with here is different. And the analogy was not intended to be a one-to-one -one comparison to vehicles. Imagine this instead. Here's a scenario, okay? Ford recalled every single replacement part for the 20-year-old Ford Taurus model. They made a big deal three or four years ago saying, do not drive a 20-year-old Ford Taurus. It is not safe. We have deemed it unsafe. We will no longer support it. And we will even give you a brand new shiny Ford for free so that you will stop driving your old unsafe one. We must then imagine it's the driver's fault if they say, no, my old Taurus just runs and runs, I refuse to upgrade. Now this is a closer mirror to Microsoft's position with regards to XP. So I do not feel that my analogy is bogus, as you say, but perhaps could have used more explanation. And there it is. So I hope that that brings some clarity to uh, right. you know, why I was using that particular analogy with regards to warranty uh, and automobiles, and uh, I hope that that so shed some point. light on it. So, you know, comment below. We welcome you to comment below. Uh, share your thoughts, uh, and uh, make sure that you uh, also, you know, if you if you're not um, subscribed uh, with an account on YouTube, you can also go to our website, Category5.tv. Click on Contact Us. Send us an email. However you like to do it, we'd love to hear from you.